Greetings YouTube. This one's going to be a little strange. I'm actually going to critique a car dash. This is a 2018 Ford Escape. It's my wife's car. Um, I had a car accident recently and I don't have a car anymore. So we've been sharing the car. She works days and I work nights so there's no conflict so I can take it at night while she's sleeping and she drives it in the daytime when I'm sleeping. So that works out. So it means I've been driving this thing regularly. And I had never, I don't think I only driven it once before then. So while I had been a passenger, I had not really noticed the layout of this dash from the perspective of a driver. And now I have. And I don't like it. So let's talk about this over here. This is the radio screen. Gives you the information about what song's playing, gives you the time, the temperature, date, all that kind of happy horse bucky. And it tells you when there's no phone found, because at the moment there's no phone found. Um, it's way too small, way too far away. It should be half that distance and twice that size. It is literally half the size of the screen I had in my Toyota Corolla. And it doesn't have any of the useful information. I mean, it, the screen is so small that... The, the scrolling names of songs are so fragmented because it can only get so many characters on the screen at a time, it's useless. My Toyota would put the whole damn song name and the band right there if I wanted to know it, and I found that very useful. I don't particularly like the layout of the radio. Um, this whole slope thing, I just find it, fe it feels like I'm, I'm reaching further and further to get things. Um, I just, I don't like it. The controls for the uh, environmental system, I find kind of, they're kind of cumbersome. It's like the fans have their own buttons, so it's not just, you, you turn this to, to, to get the, uh, the, the temperature. That over there is another knob for the temperature. I don't need that knob for the temperature. I just need just on and off. That works. These buttons are and particularly at night, they're confusing because the lights don't seem to line up well with the buttons themselves. And which does what? It's very easy to cross them. You hit two buttons at the same time. I've done that repeatedly. I'll be honest, I have not really learned these controls, and I'm probably not going to. I'm not going to be staying in this car for very long. So I'm not going to critique what's on here. Um, because like this lets you scroll through some of the screens and such. But what I what this is the screen that we normally keep it on. And I just find this whole thing very tight, very busy, and not user friendly. There's just too much going on here. See that car image right there? It's telling me stuff I don't need to know every second I'm driving. That's the kind of image I need to come up. Show me if the doors are open when they're open, and then when the car is in motion, unless something is open, just fade away. Go away. I don't need to see it. I don't like the speedometer. I prefer a speedometer where 30 miles an hour is at the 9 o'clock position, so that the speedometer arm is horizontal at 30 miles an hour. That to me is the best position, but this is slightly above that, so I'm constantly, I'm constantly finding myself if I want to, five miles an hour below where I want to be most of the time because it just doesn't line up visually where I think it should be. Also, just the way these these things slope in here, it's like it like cuts off part of your readout. Obviously, I'm not worrying about hitting you know five and six thousand uh, RPMs on my tachometer, but it's just. It's very tight and very cluttered and busy, and I don't like this design. I don't know who came up with this. I mean, that shelf's nice. My wife has a place to put her Buddha, but uh, yeah, I don't like this. I don't need a platform right here for something. It doesn't do me any good, and that platform is nearly nice to leave my glasses while I'm in, at work, but you know, before I put them back in the glove box, but when I'm driving, it does nothing. It just I want that screen to be bigger and closer and easier to access. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't much like this uh, whole layout. I know this is a weird video as far as gear is concerned, but it's something I found myself dealing with on a regular basis now, and I am not happy with it. Also, oddly, I find all of these controls, they seem to be too far away for me. I want to reach up 
and have, and it's like I reach up and I'm always hitting the back windows before I hit the front windows. Everything just seems to be further away than I want it to be. It's bizarre. The other one that's kind of cool is there's an auto, there's an auto headlight button. Kind of like that. That's kind of a nice feature. So I don't have to worry about it. The headlights come on on their own. That is a nice feature. Um, so yeah, so this has kind of been a critique of the dash of a Ford Escape. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. I am hoping that whatever dash I end up with in the next car I own, which will be a four-door sedan, that's kind of the size I, I, a car I like. Um, fits my lifestyle well. I like having an actual trunk that I can put things in you can't see. I like that. As opposed to being in the back of something like this, which you can just look in a window and see what somebody's carrying. I don't like that. Um, that's why I didn't buy my stepmother's hatchback, which my father offered me because I don't want a hatchback. I want a, a sedan. All right, so thank you for being here for this somewhat odd video. Um, anyone out there who uh, who likes the Ford Escape, tell me why. And anyone out there also has a critique on their dash or a dash they've seen, which is even worse, please tell me.